The following video contains main story spoilers up to Endwalker patch 6.2. The world of Aetherius is massive. Multiple continents, islands, lost lands and mysteries yet to be seen. Though we've seen much of our star and even those beyond, there is still so much more to explore and discover. Gameplay wise this means many places can be added to the game, providing all sorts of unique content and story. In this video, we will go over some likely locations that could be featured as upcoming content in FF14, both in the upcoming expansion and those beyond. As a starting point, let's begin with Emmett Selk's list of places he stated would be our duty to explore, making these the most likely candidates. Tell me, have you been to the ruins beneath the waters of the Bounty? The Bounty was the first place we visited in Newfound Adventure. The reason I'm covering it here is due to how he worded his statement. Emmett Selk calls them ruins, but what we saw were not ruins at all, but a properly maintained and guarded complex controlled by Vitra. It begs the question, have we actually seen these ruins yet? Could more lie in wait beneath the waters of the bounty? Or the treasure islands beyond the frozen waters of Blind Frost in Offerd's North? Blind Frost is a mysterious sea and one that's presented many dangers to any attempting to chart it. What information we have about it tells tales of a region choked with drifting ice flows and hammered by violent storms. To this day, traders and merchants have found no safe routes through the region. Maps of the area do show islands which may or may not be inhabited. Emmett Selk, however, seems to know of treasure islands beyond its sea towards the very north of our world. Since it harbours such riches, one can speculate that this sea was much less violent long ago. A calamity such as the one of water could have changed its climate into what it is today. Treasure islands alone make the blind frost well worth the look, and in terms of design, it could be a zone modelled after the likes of Antarctica. The fabled golden cities of the new world. The New World has been part of the game's lore since the very beginning. It's one of the great landmasses of Aetheris. We have no map showing its location, but information has it placed to the west of Eorzea, at the other side of the vast ocean, the Indigo Deep. The New World was a place considered almost to be nothing but legend, until its discovery by a Lamincent explorer, roughly 80 years before the game's timeline. The explorer who rediscovered the New World was called Ketemram the Blue. Both he and his crew explored all they could, so most of our information of this place comes from them. They encountered a sprawling nation inhabited by Mamulja, a race of beast men which are also found in Lanosia, such as around the area of Bronze Lake. These are mostly mercenaries, who made the journey from the New World to profit from the unrest that until recently had plagued Eorzea. Mamulja, which also happens to be the nation's name as well as that of the Beastmen, is ruled over by a single two-headed king, the Otarch, who keeps the many tribes of Mamulja united under a single rule. Emmett Selk's claims of fabled golden cities would also be pretty accurate, as Katemram was given many riches and traded for such and many more. Many of the food groups that we find in Eorzea today came from the New World, a prime example being the infamous Papato and Ruby Tomatoes. Katemram's return from the New World spawned a golden age of discovery, as Eorzeans flocked across the Indigo Deep in order to visit these newly discovered lands. Admiral Merwib would likely be our link to getting there, as during her pirate days she led an expedition with her crews to the New World. The New World promises to be a land steeped in mystery for us to explore, with vast cities and riches to discover. Its size alone would make it a perfect addition in a future expansion. Something else of note, since Mamulja come from the New World, and they have been seen in the Crystal Tower, this suggests the Alligans either visited or could have conquered territory there. This could hint at the discovery of more Alligan mysteries in future. It seems obvious that the New World, by its name, description and location, is inspired by the continents of the Americas. I wouldn't be surprised to see peoples and cities inspired by the likes of El Dorado, 
and other places and peoples of history or legends. The sacred sites of the forgotten people of the South Sea Isles. The South Sea Isles are a large chain of islands and islets. Its location on Aetherus' equator means it has a tropical climate, similar to what we'd see on our island sanctuary. In fact, the South Sea Isles lie to the south of our island. These islands are the ancestral home of the Lalafell race, who long ago migrated across the world, in particular to Eorzea. Stories tell of peoples who use catamaran ships to travel between the islands with ease, making this an ideal place to find adventure. In fact, trade between these islands and Limsa Liminsa is commonplace as of today. Emmet Selk mentioned the sacred sites of these isles. We don't have any information on such sites yet in lore, but we do know that these peoples do have an advanced level of arcanema, them having developed many different arts, such as those of the Arcanist. This shows the isles have much to offer adventurers and scholars alike. In terms of a theme, I wouldn't be surprised to see a Caribbean theme to these islands, with pirates and traders making their names. A Pirates of the Caribbean-like situation. What about Mericidia, the southern continent? Do you know aught of its present state of affairs? Mericidia has been one of the most anticipated places to visit in all of FF14's history. It's a large continent that lies beyond the known map to the south of the three great continents. From what we know of Mericidia, it once flourished with many unique races making it very similar to Eorzea in that respect. First historical records of this continent are that of the first brood of Midgar Sormer. Both Bahamut and Tiamat made Mericidia their home along with their children. Other races and beings would also call it home, such as an unnamed tree-like race, a race of centaurs, and a myriad of humanoid races similar to those found around the world. Many tribes of Mikote also lived there during this time, but most would migrate back to Eorzea in the 5th Umbral Era. After the Allegan invasion in the 3rd Astral Era, much of the continent was left uninhabitable. This was likely due to the Allegan weaponry and void scent which wrought destruction wherever they went. The primal summonings by Mericidia's desperate peoples likely didn't help matters either, likely leaving much of the land barren. When Emmet Selk mentioned his present state of affairs, he referred to the fact that none have been there for many years. Any that have tried have seen themselves driven off by reclusive peoples who are not warm to visitors. Current theory suggests that Tiamat and her brood may have returned to Mericidia at the end of Shadowbringers, which could be a valid reason for us to visit this lost continent. Like the New World, I expect to see many relics and sites of the Allegan Empire. Who knows what could have been left behind after the invasion. I could imagine an Australian theme to Mericidia, maybe with a mix of Africa. Barren lands dotted with isolated peoples, who have long since passed trusting any who come from beyond the sea. Go forth and seek discovery. Some of the civilizations in the reflections will surprise you. When Aetherus was sundered long ago, it was into the Source and 13 Reflections. Of these 13 Reflections, only 5 remain as of today. These include the 1st, 4th, 8th, 9th and the 11th. The current story arc has us exploring the 13th, also known as the Void. The story hints that we will be seeking to try and restore this reflection, similar to how we helped restore the 1st. It's most likely, however, that Emma Selk was referring to Reflections 4, 8, 9 and 11. And if Ishtola learns the secrets to world travel from her experiences in the Void, it may become a reality sooner than we think, which appears to be what the story is setting up. As a result, one of these Reflections and their surprising civilizations may be the destination of our journey, in 7.0 or even beyond. Players have speculated all kinds of theories about these reflections for years. One I'm particularly fond of is finding an advanced technological civilization, and would be the location of the last remaining Sunderdassians who are currently unaccounted for. If you have your own theories about the reflections, let everybody know in the comments. 
Now we move on to the locations on Aetheris, not mentioned by Emmet Selk, but are well established in lore. Erzland is the home of the Rogadin race, located in the Northern Empty. While the most populous Rogadin clan, the Sea Wolves, left Erzland early in the 6th Astral Era, other Rogadin clans left their ancestral lands at various points, including those who became the Heldsguard. That's Erzland's official description. We know that our fellow Scions, Ergamus and Bloomweeda, are travelling there to learn more about their people's origins. The founder of Charlian, Nuncreft, originated from this place as well, and he built and sailed his ship from there during the Sixth Umbral Calamity, and would go on to found Charlian not long after. This shows the peoples of this land have advanced knowledge of both magic and shipbuilding. The Far Reach is a region that lies far to the north of Eorzea, past Dravania and Albalta's spine. This place is the ancestral home of the Rogadin Heldsguard race. Descriptions and tales from this land speak of a region with much volcanic activity, fiery peaks and mountains of flame, which locals believe are the gates to the underworld itself. This could be an interesting place to visit, likely on foot or by sea however, as gale force winds are a common weather condition for the area, and even by sea there are dangers. Tales tell of the appearance of massive floating islands of ice, that appear in the seas around the Far Reach during the winter months. Nagja is an interesting region in lore, and is one of the few unadded places to FF14 that has had updated lore in the recent past. It's described as a place covered in swamps and thick jungles, and always hammered with rain. This to me sounds like an amazing zone to explore, as we've not had a jungle before in FF14, but we did pass through the Goldmore jungle in Dalmasca. However, for an actual zone, the Great Wood on the first is the closest we've actually gotten to a jungle. In recent lore history, Nagsia finally won its freedom from the rule of the Garlean Empire when it collapsed. The region was occupied by the 4th Imperial Legion until their fall due to the battles in Bosgia. We know little about Nagsia's current status, but it may soon be time for us to visit there. Our fellow Scions are already making plans to go there, and even have a guide. Our Scion members have been venturing to all parts of the world after we disbanded, which only adds to the theories about future zones. Staying in Othard, we have the Kingdom of Dalmasca, which is heavily featured in the Final Fantasy games focused on Ivalice. Most of our exposure to Dalmasca has been through the Return of Ivalice Alliance raids, where we venture through the city of Rabinaster itself and into its waterways. This nation has long fought for its freedom from the Garlean Empire, who conquered it long ago. And with the fall of the Empire, they have finally succeeded. Dalmasca and Rabinaster are steeped in lore from the series, making them ideal places to be added to FF14, especially since we've already seen parts of both. A good story to be told there could be Dalmasca's struggle to reform its kingdom, due to the vast number of resistance factions that the region had all whom had different ideologies and opinions on what the new kingdom should be reformed as. Hingashi would be a welcome region to be added to the game, as Kugane is situated within its borders. Hingashi is a nation which maintains a neutral standing, and has an isolationist policy. They adopted this due to the threat of the Garlean Empire as they continued their reign of conquest. While Kugane is part of their nation, you may have noticed the high walls and gates that prevent anyone from passing. Kugani itself sits on an island furthest to the west of that region. Travel and trade are strictly regulated and almost non-existent with the city of Bukyo, the capital of Hingashi. With the empire gone, their attitude towards opening their borders once again may have softened, the ideal gameplay and lore excuse to add Hingashi to FF14. This would be a fascinating region to explore for a number of reasons. Hingashi is the origin point for the arts of the samurai, ninja and even geomancers. If ever a geomancer or a similar job were added to FF14, my bets are on Bukyo being added with it. This region would explore more older Japanese culture, as Hingashi is ruled by an emperor and a militarized government. 
Corvos is a country that lies to the south of the continents of Ilzebart. Many years ago, this region was inhabited by a myriad of races, who would soon be joined by the survivors of the city of Gog, who would later become the Garleans. These Garlean peoples will be forced out of Corvos by the magic wielding races, forced to settle in the far north. When the Empire rose to power, Corvos was one of their first conquests, not only for the lands they held, but also an act of revenge. This land has many legends about it. One claims that the ancient king of Corvos bid the queen of a tribe of fairies to make him an object that none have seen before. This would turn out to be a flying carpet. Garlemald's conquering of Corvos happened around 50 years before the events of FF14. Our very own Grahatia was originally from Corvos. His former tribe is still active in the region, but has remained in hiding due to their connections with Alag which the Empire would have tried to exploit. Corvos gained its independence when the Empire fell. Our fellow Scions have already been there to assess the situation. Corvos was heavily affected by the final days. The second legion that held Corvos was wiped out by the Terminus Beasts. As things keep progressing with Garlemald, it's likely the subject of Corvos will come up due to strange relations between the two, which could very well be our purpose in going there. And those are my picks for the locations to be added in FF14 in the future. The world of FF14 has so many unexplored locations, and there are so many more that I haven't mentioned. Let me know your opinion on this subject and what places you could see added in 7.0 and beyond. Click that like button to show your approval of the video, and feel free to subscribe to stay tuned for more. Thanks all, and now, as always... Have a good one.